Welcome, everybody. I'm Scott Wright, uh, the CEO of Click Armor, and uh, I'm the person who set up the Cybersecurity Awareness Forum here with AJ Lease. Welcome, AJ. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Long time and, listener, first time caller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, AJ was with us on our first uh, awareness forum. Yeah. And uh, Fleetus can't make it today. He was at our last one. Uh, Tyler may be joining us. We'll watch for him as well. Um, and we've got quite a few people joining now from uh, the the uh, chat. So um, just want to thank everybody for joining. If, if you missed any of our previous sessions, this is really an informal discussion on security awareness topics. And each session we try to start with a, a new topic, raise some questions for discussion, and have people in the panel and people in the chat um, just uh, share their views on what we're uh, talking about. So it gets uh, a little bit of um, you know cross pollination, lessons learned, uh, sharing with people. And I think there are enough different areas of security awareness that we could do this for quite a while. Our first one, we weren't sure how long it was going to go, but uh, we decided we'd continue on. But uh, I want to thank everybody who's joined us so far. And uh, we also uh, have published uh, past sessions. We did one on Security Awareness Month. We did one on uh, compliance uh, requirements for security awareness. And those are all posted on the Click Armor website at clickarmor.ca slash slash CSAF for Cybersecurity Awareness Forum. And uh, you can view them there. You can sign up there to get regular notifications of, of these calls. So... Uh, the session we're going to uh, talk about today, we're going to try to focus a little bit on content and topics within security awareness. Uh, what are the most important topics to cover? What are the attributes of content that we'd like to see? Things like that. So I think AJ has some ideas on this. I have some questions I'm going to pose in these polls. And uh, hopefully we'll get everybody to participate. I'm going to share my screen right now and uh, show you... Uh, an interesting tool that I'm, uh, I've used before. Uh, it's called Poll Everywhere. And uh, if you were to go to pollev.com, uh, and I have a free account there, uh, we don't have enough people for it to be worth uh, doing a, a big shell out, but uh, pollev.com slash Scott W833. Uh, and that, that'll be our session. So uh, once you're in there, it will just ask you for a username. You can put whatever anonymous name you like, or you can put your real name, that's fine. Um, and once you join, when I activate uh, some poll questions, you should see them pop up in uh, the Poll Everywhere uh, app. You can also just do it on the web at uh, pollev.com slash scottw833 and, and the same, same idea there once you're logged in. So uh, I'm going to uh, start with uh, a little bit of a roundtable just to see uh, who is joining us and, and where they're coming from. So uh, let's start with... Uh, uh, just a round table and say, you know, say hello, say where you're, where you're here from. I'm from Ottawa, Canada. AJ, where are you these days? Calgary, Alberta. Calgary, Alberta. Heart of the Rockies. Yeah. You can and see. <laughs> yeah. while uh, we ask others to sort of type in where they're, they're joining us from, uh, maybe you can do a quick intro, AJ, of, of your background uh, to yeah, uh, remind for people. Sure. Yeah, you bet. Uh, so I've been in the security game now about 10-ish years. I think that's a fair milestone. Uh, I was going to DEF CON back when I was driving the forklift, so I count some of those years too. <laughs> um, you know, and it's uh, it, it's been quite of an interesting ride. I've had uh, roles in uh, some offensive security, uh, lots of blue team and incident response, a little bit of governance, risk and compliance. Uh, so yeah, I've done my time in the paperwork mines. Uh, and uh, my probably one of the more interesting parts of the career was definitely uh, information security teaching. Uh, and it was there that I really learned how people learn and how I think we as security people were kind of we were doing our users a bit of a disservice by sort of expecting them to have a lot of the necessary knowledge uh, without actually presenting it or even presenting a why does this matter. Um, so, you know, security awareness kind of became near and dear to what I do, uh, which is basically designing games to benefit security programs. Uh, so my company, Syntax Security, uh, so a little, little startup that I started uh, just to find better ways to make security more accessible to everybody uh, because it is better when it is a team sport uh, and there's a way for everybody to kind of have fun while we learn and while those games now create some impact in the security space. So looking forward to seeing kind of where just this whole industry heads, you know, in the, the near future. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks very much for, for joining us and your constant uh, support uh, on LinkedIn. AJ is available on LinkedIn. We'll do some contact stuff uh, at the end probably too. Uh, but uh, I love that AJ and I sort of connected because we're both in the area of gamification and security. Um, my focus really is on security awareness for all staff and just trying to get people to better manage their individual risks um, through innovative uh, things like uh, Click Armor, the product that I have, which is a gamified security awareness training platform. But love what AJ is doing. Uh, to he's he's really starting, I think, at the the management level, which is great. You know, just to get management buy in, and then they learn that everybody in the management team really should be learning about cybersecurity, business continuity, disaster recovery, all that stuff, incident response, and then it sort of trickles down, right? I mean, eventually everybody's going to need to know. A little bit, of, at least, about uh, incident response and uh, and business continuity. So, uh, yeah. Think, and if your senior gonna... managers aren't on, like, they're not on the side of the program, it's dead yeah. in the water. It isn't going to go anywhere, right? So you need all of that senior management buy-in. They're the ones yeah. who control the budget and the resource allocation. So by showcasing a lot of uh, what a security lapse can do to the business, uh, I found a really excellent way to get that point across pretty quickly. Cool. So um, what I'm going to do now is, um, I don't know if we got any, uh, we didn't get any takers to announce where they're logging in from. Uh, I recognize a few names. I'm not going to call people out, but uh, we've got got a good variety of people joining us today. So hopefully we'll get some good questions and and good comments. So uh, looks like Ryan has one. Oh, what? uh, Why am I not seeing it? I didn't see. Maybe you can relay that for me because I don't see his. Yeah, sure. Okay. Brian, uh, go ahead and type it in the in the chat there. Oh, I see the, the hand came up. <laughs> I still still learning to to type uh, or to manage good. this stuff. Yeah. So yeah, Ryan's uh, gonna ask a question. We could promote Ryan to be a panelist. Why don't we do that? See if yeah. he's see if he's able to ask a question. Uh, it might might take Jesse a has one as well. Awesome, cool. So uh, Ryan, not to put you on the spot, but uh, you're live. On the panel now. <laughs> Hi, Scott. Well, the, the only reason I put up my hand was just to say that the chat was disabled. Oh, so, well, that it's good to know. That's why know. nobody's Oops. answering. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot for uh, everybody. Probably put in where they came from, and uh, and we're not. I don't know what's different. I tried to clone the the last one, and I thought we had input from it. Anyway, thanks for for letting us know, Ryan. <laughs> Although I don't mind introducing myself. I'm, yeah, for sure. Go ahead. I'm Ryan Thompson. I'm calling from Toronto. Um, and I my background is I'm actually an educator. I'm a high school teacher who has decided to kind of dabble in cybersecurity as a hobby and then perhaps uh, get into it full time. Um, so I've been actually very like interested in awareness and training um, and perhaps trying to you know, help out in that area and try to improve it. Cause I do, I, I, I kind of agree with you. Some of, some of it does need some honing. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm here to learn and, and uh, see what you guys can offer as well. That's well, great. standing up in front of a high school classroom is, I mean, that's a ton more scary than any boardroom <laughs> that you'd ever face. So I think you'll be fine. Oh, <laughs> You're okay, okay in that regard. All right. No, okay, kidding. so Jesse, good. Jesse wanted to join. Is that uh, or yeah. had a question? Cool. All right, so I'm bringing Jesse on right now. I need a virtual assistant to do this stuff for me. So <laughs> at some point, here he comes, Jesse. Awesome. Hey guys. Hey Jesse, welcome. Thanks for having me. No, I was just coming. I started just to say the chat was disabled too. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. Uh, Let's introduce but, yourself. Uh, just to... I, I'm happy to be a panelist, although I'm not exactly sure what that means here since it's my first time attending. So it's it's pretty informal. We're just looking for people's questions and answers or responses to other people's questions. So we're happy to have anybody who has uh, a question or an opinion on that stuff. So uh, we'll uh, look forward to, to your questions. Do you have any questions at the moment? You, you joined us for, you know, knowing that we're going to be covering content and topics. Any any. Uh, yeah, well, so so I mean, basically, who I am, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a tech by trade. I've been in IT for a long time. Worked for a bunch of IT managed service providers um, for a while. Uh, jumped ship and started a cybersecurity firm. So I, I uh, my 
passion, my focus right now is on the human risk side of things and on helping leaders develop leadership skills and culture building. So that's why AJ, your, your kind of company and Click Armor, sort of the ideas around what you're doing sort of attracted me to kind of see what y'all are talking about. Uh, but I love the idea of um, actually helping business leaders measure culture and build those teams and really make a difference um, and in a tricksy sort of way, helping them be better leaders by using technology to help their people be better with cybersecurity without calling it that, so to speak. Cool. Uh, and I'm early in on my journey. I'm not about a year in on my company. So just uh, still finding my feet, so to speak. That's awesome. That's great. Um, thanks a lot for, for joining us. And um, so hopefully you'll be able to participate as well. I just figured out how to turn on chat. So everybody can just uh, enter if you feel like it, uh, where you're coming in from. You should be able to do that now. So uh, apologize for that uh, little hiccup. But uh, Huzzah. We have yeah, a, yeah. We have, I would have figured somebody would put hello world in there first. There's <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky. Thanks. Lexington. Yeah. yeah. You got a very comfortable selection of Kentucky Burby or, uh, bourbon around. That's Janet's not... being coy, just saying hello world. Oh, just <laughs> Ottawa. okay. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, great. Okay, so now we're going to get into the, the fun stuff. We're going to try and do this uh, poll, and I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see kind of what I'm seeing. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, be able to do this in some organized way or whatever. You should be able to see now what looks like a messy uh, PC desktop with uh, a, uh, a window that has uh, which, yeah, so you should see this actually up right now. There's a question that says, rank which security awareness topics are most important to you? And I've put a bunch here that I was able to think of, and there's probably a lot more that you'd like to see, but um, in this, Poll, what you can do is select one of those items and move it up uh, or down and then do a submit at the bottom. So uh, give you guys a couple minutes to respond to these in terms of uh, it's, it's a little bit of a trick to try and drag these things up and down in, in terms of the rankings that you'd like to see. So I'm not sure if it's that easy to use, but let's talk through some of these things um, while we've got Jesse on. Uh, why don't we ask you, Jesse, you know, uh, how would you rank sort of at least the top um topic for uh, security awareness that you think is most important, especially in your business? Yeah, I mean, just just based on the trends alone, right? So um, I, I'm one of those crazy people that reads all those reports that come out, right? Yeah. Uh, so the Verizon data which reports the recent one. And um, all the people that I talk to and me being people first centric in terms of what I do, I, I, I in particular really like to talk about social engineering and phishing attacks and BEC and sure, yeah. You know, the tricky kind of things that uh, since uh, I'm sure y'all are all aware as technology gets better, they're, they're going to come out with more and more psychological approaches to getting to what they need versus uh, coming at you from the tech side. So yeah. It's going to get more and more of a problem in the future. Yep. That makes sense for sure. Social engineering and phishing. It used to be when I was, you know, talking to customers, phishing was always number one, but I think social engineering is, up there, maybe even higher now, because um, the number of times people get uh, fished or called for uh, gift card scams and stuff like that that are not necessarily phishing. Um, it's absolutely true. So I'm going to see if we actually have any results from people uh, voting on this stuff yet. So um, we've got uh, social engineering, number one, security basics, number two, phishing, number three. So um, I'd love to be able to show you how I'm seeing this <laughs> and uh, uh, I'll put it in the recorded version. I'll, I'll put a, uh, a graphic as in this portion of the discussion. So you can sort of see what the uh, uh, priority looks like, but it looks to me like social engineering, security basics, phishing, compliance standards, like PCI, SOC 2, CMMC, uh, accidental data loss, operational security, insider threats, privacy, and code of conduct. So I'm sure everybody didn't get a chance to fully sort these, um, but it's a, it's a good place to start. So, you know, when it comes to social engineering, um, I think um, mostly I mentioned the, the gift card scam. Does anybody have any other favorite uh, social engineering scenarios that they think are really important to make sure people understand? Oh, there's the CEO asking for the wire transfers to 
everybody. Yep. Yep. Hey, somebody in marketing, I, I need, I need you to initiate a wire transfer. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. amount of times I've seen the, Oh, they might be impersonating us. Like, yeah, they can do that. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I saw those kinds of attacks, you know, starting, you know, five, six years ago, at least, um, you know, in fact, there was a big one. If you did a Google search, I think it's Chubb security um, or Chubb insurance. Um, there was a, a, I think it was a mutual fund company or somebody that had been uh, swindled or, or scammed that way for about $480,000 by, uh, or on, on a, uh, I think it was a mutual fund company and they tried to claim it uh, on their cyber insurance. This was five years ago. Uh, and Chubb Insurance uh, said, nope, in the fine print, that's just plain old fraud. <laughs> it's not cyber. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, insurance becomes such a hot topic these days. Uh, but that, that was definitely one of the more common ones as well. Um, well and having spoken to, a, spoken to a lot of insurance providers, they like the market for that kind of cyber insurance is starting to harden. So it's really going to become a lot more difficult, you know, to the point where some organizations have said their insurance premiums have raised like multiple digit percents because of just how risky it is to insure some people now. So the premiums are going up, like the, the value that you get out of it is going down. Um, you know, no longer can we really rely on insurance to quote unquote save us uh, and, and hopes that, you know, the risk will somehow work itself out. Right. So it's one of these now when you, when you posit that, you know, social engineering is just so common and so easy to do because it can take advantage of the way that we work. Uh, and then you put that into perspective of nobody's coming to cover you if you fall victim to this. Uh, yeah. yeah, all of a sudden security programs have money just raining from the heavens, um, which is pales in comparison to something like a CRM project. But at the end of the day, more budget is always nice. Yeah, for sure. The other type of sort of pseudo social engineering and, and phishing, depending on how you define phishing, but um, Stephen's mentioning, you know, the SMS messages that are becoming really, um, you know, a good variety now, right? There's uh, your mobile carrier saying they've got a, sometimes it's a refund. Sometimes it's just a problem you have to address, click a link and stuff, but there's also tax refunds. I see, you know, you get an email from IRS or in Canada, it's CRA. Uh, so those kinds of things. Um, I think I'm going to, uh, Oh, Norman has his hand up. So I'm going to uh, invite Norman on. Hey, Norman. Good day. Welcome and uh, thanks for uh, joining us. And and so you had a comment. Uh, actually, I, I I I'm amazed at you that I I wasn't even touching the keyboard. So for it to oh, <laughs> it's like, oh okay, well I don't mind. You accidentally raised your hand. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm I'm not sure how it happened, but uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, I'm happy to be here. It's uh, the, the topic of conversation is interesting. Um, Gentlemen, I, I run an IT consulting firm in cyber. Uh, we're very cyber centric and concerned in that area. And I, I must admit, this weekend I read uh, four white papers about um, about how uh, how uh, people can be breached, how companies can get breached, and so forth. And uh, <laughs> and I woke up. On Monday morning, with a and a cold sweat, thinking, "Oh my God, we're so vulnerable!" <laughs> like it's just, it's not funny. And I'm uh, it, even, I'm sort of more passionate now than I ever have been, having read those papers and realizing just how many uh, methods of a, attack there are available to uh, yeah. to folks out there. It, we are, uh, it, it's very much a concern, and and, uh, and it's you know. I'm looking at a personal level, but also at a business level, it's uh, it, it's a major concern nowadays. And I still I still think education is key to it. Um, and I'm still seeing the rationale that says, you know, you've got to keep training your people because yeah, uh, it's so easy uh, to get breached. Or, so, or, so your vote is for social engineering as well to be at the, the top of uh, the- It, it has staff. to be. I, yeah. I just- uh, Regardless of how well educated you are in this industry, yeah, you can still fall for something. Uh, I fell for something less than a month ago, where I was multitasking, and uh, and I got a prompt that said, "Oh, you you need to enter your user ID and password." And I had done it before I realized why am I entering my user ID and password? 
but I was multitasking and I, you know, I immediately had to shut things down, change my classroom. <laughs> oh, geez. Like, oh, geez, what was I thinking? But, you know, and I, I live in the industry, so it just, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not the youngest guy in the, on the planet, but uh, I'm really concerned about those folks that are in their late 60s and 70s and, and beyond because, man, it's just too easy nowadays to, uh, to, to you know, find yeah. yourself at the, at the, you know, the victim of a, an assault or attack. Right. Uh, yeah, well, I total, totally agree, and and thanks very much for the the input, Norman. Um, I, I uh, think that we kind of all come to the conclusion in terms of you know the the top priorities. the The ranking that we have here, I've put things in order just in my response card to match what I see in the, in the actual uh, uh, report. So that's sort of the final uh, adjustment we see in terms of how uh, what ordering. Uh, people find the training materials as a priority. So if you have nothing else that, you know, or, or if you have a limited uh, budget for doing awareness training, these are the things I think, you know, from the top down, you want to make sure get get covered. And, um, you know, at some point, obviously people need to understand basics, but you really have to start with the highest risk stuff. Uh, if you're you know, in the very short term, just to reduce the risk uh, with, with the low hanging fruit kind of thing. Uh, any other comments on, on this, uh, AJ? Um, yeah, social engineering is just always a, a crowd pleaser, right? So if you're trying to, if, if you're really wanting to get started, if you are managing a security program, uh, awareness program inside your organization, where you're looking to start one, um, for any of the budding security awareness developers in the room, uh, one good way to kind of get this going inside your own space, wherever you're working, uh, is to simply just float it past management. Say, hey, I just want to do a lunch and learn webinar uh, where I can have a conversation about a topic. Uh, and social engineering is usually the one that I would recommend to kind of you know break that ice a little bit because it is one that you can directly point to you know some immediate business compromise or some kind of business process compromise. Uh, and you can describe how easy it is to do, how you don't actually have to be very technical in order to be very good at social engineering. You just need to be persuasive, both in written and personal formats. And then uh, at that point, it just becomes a, a conversation about how the, the human element can be used to do nefarious things with the technology. And so when you chain those together and you put it in a perspective for ordinary audiences, you gain a lot of really interesting questions from the audience at large, but you also get a lot of uh, really good traction with the various management teams. So uh, if I had pick one and only one topic to cover forever it'd be that one but awesome. variety is the spice of life so cool don't stick to one <laughs> that's great um and anyone else uh, who's on the call feel free to type in uh, your comments in the chat as well so um we'll get your your views in on this but i'm going to move on right now to our next poll question um which you should be able to see in your app or on the uh, poll everywhere uh, web page so the question is rank your biggest complaints about content. And so when it comes to uh, what, what do you worry most about, you know, that are a barrier or a hindrance to your awareness training uh, content deployment. Number one is too irrelevant. Um, number two, uh, so I'm gonna move these around to kind of where people are putting them in my reporting thing. So not enough chances to practice. Um, too time consuming is, uh, I think that's one that I hear a lot. I'm not sure what you folks think in terms of uh, courses. We talked about this almost uh, early on um, in our first one about cybersecurity awareness month, the, the big bang approach versus chunking things up. Right? And so um, a lot of people find that doing stuff in a big bang takes an hour, an hour and a half, and people just hate that, right? So, uh, and then not enough practical guidance. Um, and uh, not enough focus on impacts, which is interesting because it's sometimes hard to get people to actually pay attention if they don't understand the, the impact that they could be. I mean, a lot of people think they're not targets, right? <laughs> is that, do you guys agree to hear that? Yeah, I mean, human resources, who would ever want to mess with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know if this is controversial or not, but uh, my, my opinion, honestly, and think about it, is employees don't care about your business. They don't, they absolutely don't care about if they get you ransomed or fished. They only care about what happens to them if that happens. Like that's my point of view and my experience talking with people. And for me, relevance and training is about making it relevant to where they understand it's useful to them personally. And that 
translates to the business. It's it's less about protecting my business's data and more about how to be safer online and, and that and protects the business data. Like that's how I like to approach it with people. It's just Yeah, like, for sure. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad it didn't happen to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Except guess whose budget that comes out of when they have to pull a little bit extra from everybody's at the end of the year. Yeah, it's right? true. I, yeah. I'm reading a book right now called uh, Atomic Habits, which I really recommend. It's it's about how to change your, you know, uh, bad habits or get out of your bad habits and start good habits. And and near the end, there's there's really good, good insight around, you know, the fact that we really prioritize short-term rewards a lot better than, or a lot more highly than uh, longer-term stuff, right? So it makes, it makes total sense. So... Uh, Anyway, that's uh, where we are with this one. I'm just going to sort of reorganize this a little bit. Uh, too big. Okay, so we, just to get things kind of into the order that I see them. So any any other comments from, from you guys uh, or from the chat? I'd say bring an element of performance art into your security awareness training. If you have a, like a history of being on stage in some capacity or another, uh, that's an absolute benefit to your security awareness program, uh, regardless of what performance art you've spent time in. Uh, guaranteed, the fact that you're more comfortable in front of an audience means you're probably going to get that point across a little bit better. So I would say if if anybody here or anybody at large is, you know, hey, I've only I've, I've done some of this and I'm, I'm curious to see how I can make some money from some you know performance art in a sense. This is a way to do it because you're really just telling a story of what can happen inside the business. So when you combine it with really solid, relevant details as to these are the attackers looking to mess with your environment. These are some of the impacts that come from some of that. This is how it might affect things like your budget, your raises, your bonuses, et cetera, et cetera. Then that becomes, and then you can wrap some performance art around it. That really just kind of gets that content being interesting. I mean, we've all lived in the death by PowerPoint realm, and it's not really <laughs> appealing to have to sit through yet another one of these presentations in a boardroom. So yeah, bring a little performance art flair into it. I mean, and obviously be aware of your audience, but yeah, that's it's always a net benefit. Yeah, and I think that came up earlier in our first uh, session on uh, just general security awareness month stuff. And I think it was even Terry that that asked the question, um, you know, what can I do to make my blog posts more interesting, right? And it's just getting that practice at, at writing and, and spending time gathering stories. And once you've got that ability, then you can, as, as AJ said, you can perform, you can put on little events, uh, webinars. You know, I'm, I'm looking at one... Uh, uh, client uh, where we're looking at doing some kinds of, you know, this kind of webinar with this kind of polling uh, or some kind of uh, sort of competition based stuff that that's live and it just makes it more fun. And, and if you can get uh, comfortable with hosting that kind of thing, then it would definitely uh, help. Cool. Um, any other comments on uh, complaints around? Uh, oh, Terry had a, a question or a comment. People skills definitely offer an advantage and I do like how diverse backgrounds are of people working in the awareness field. Yeah. I mean, in general security, you find a, a pretty diverse, um, you know, it, it, especially several years ago, maybe now there are more programs in schools for security, you know, um, uh, as a career, but, you know, even 10 years ago, people in security often came from a wide variety of, of areas and you still see it uh, quite often. All right. Well, those typically make the best security pros, in my opinion. Yeah, because they can relate to, different to people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They don't, you know, if, if you're not as technical, you're not really going to get down in the weeds on, on what the technical vulnerabilities are. So you have to try and keep things as um, much in the lowest common denominator as possible so that everybody kind of understands without boring the technical people or, you know, vice versa. So. I talk about that a lot, actually. Like, um, oh, IT people have a lot of trouble communicating with non-IT people. And so, and part of our problem getting buy-in is that it's very difficult to have that conversation when they don't want to hear what you're saying <laughs> or they, they don't understand what you're saying or whatever, whatever the reason is, but yeah, it's very. Yep. Yep. So uh, I'm loading up a new, uh, new poll now. Um, this is a quick one, just asking if you can rank your recommendations for attributes of content. So things like, Making uh, more intrinsic versus extrinsic rewards, uh, gamification essentially, um, having a shorter duration per session, having more interactivity, having more tailoring of content uh, to be relevant relevant to people, 
and having more risk scenarios or other things as well. So um, like to get your views on that and I'll try and sort these things into uh, where we see them popping up as people uh, enter their uh, input. But uh, any, any thoughts on this? Uh, Jesse, Norman, AJ. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my, my thought, obviously, I, I think I already voted was a less. I mean, for me, it's about less duration and it's about practicing, right? Like every skill to, to get better at it, you have to practice at it. And if you forget and you don't practice at it, that's when we fall victim to it easily. And even us here on this board, like, like uh, Norm said, we're all, we're all experts in our own area, but it's real easy to forget that they prey on the fact that you're busy. Like they, they, they intentionally attack you uh, at 3 a.m. on a Saturday because they realize you're not at your best. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that's that's really uh, one of the reasons, you know, I, I try to get this uh, across to people is, you know, if, if you're not getting people to think about stuff on a constant basis as they go through this, they just put the video in the corner of their screen and go do other things. Um, and so you have to give them that context, some something relevant to think about and something to click on um, to stay engaged, right? It's not just click through, it's, okay, what do I do to get to the next thing? I'm going to have to answer this right. And if I don't get it right, I'm going to get some different feedback. Um, so having a high degree of interactivity, I think really helps uh, as you present more uh uh, more types of relevant content like risk scenarios and then giving people that kind of reward. Um, we're also finding that people are um, responding well to having more tailored content. You know, uh, I think that's been a recommendation for a long time in, in the major um, uh, guidelines and that is have tailored content for your uh, organization in general, but also for people in different roles. And that gets to be a little bit, you know, cost prohibitive at times, but what we see, first of all, yes, if you can tailor the content so that there are uh, references to the roles, at least, of the people in the organization, you, you shouldn't be talking about the president of the company if the company has a CEO or a, an executive director, right? Um, it just all of a sudden reminds people this is one size fits all. So you'd like to be able to see something that you know has the name of the, the president or even has the picture or the video of them, um, if possible, uh, explaining why it's so important. And then as you go through some of these practice uh, risk scenarios, to be able to include people who are in uh, different roles. And maybe you get a phishing email from the help desk, uh, you know, somebody you know in the help desk or somebody you know in HR. Um, that can really help people to focus more on it. Um, so I'm going to do one more update and make sure that we've got the order here, right? looks pretty close. So I think everybody's kind of agreeing. Having more interactivity does keep people more engaged um, and helps them to uh, consume the content more. Any, any other comments on that, uh, Norman? Yeah, just uh, you know, recently uh, took some training and, uh, and the gamification side of things was quite interesting. We have a small company here, but, uh, you know, you could see people – were uh, had had done the done the course and that you could see their scores and kind of looked at your score and you kind of go oh uh, I didn't do very well I need to improve and uh, you know it's I enjoyed the game vacation side because it uh, it added another stimulus to to sort of help motivate you to uh, sort of go back and figure out why you didn't answer that correctly and what you needed to do and it. It, uh, I, I think the the approach you're taking where we're running through scenarios uh, is it, it helps people realize that, boy, you know, I just just because I missed the way that was misspelled, I got penalized. I need to go back and look at that. And simple little hooks like that, that you, you know, you need to hone those, uh, your attention skills to make sure that, hey, I am paying attention when I you know, look at the URL and, and is that the correct spelling and what have I just clicked on? You know, it's, uh, but the game vacation side was really quite stunning to me because, you know, next thing you know, I'm taking the test again and I'm taking it again and trying to drive points up just to, <laughs> uh, to sort of set, set the example, you know, but. Yeah, uh, yeah. that's really, really true. And, and Ryan actually made a good point in the, in the chat that um, it's good to actually have some follow-up using the gamification and then having some follow-up discussion with people about um, what they learned or what they might have missed and the experience. Yeah, I always lead the lessons learned 
session post IR game, because it's, you know, okay, let's have a conversation about even in the scope of this, this game session of, you know, yeah, it's a mock incident. It happened within the business. This is what the impact looked like, but what did any of you learn? And, you know, some of the most interesting conversation really comes at the very tail end of the whole session. So you think about everybody's been sitting on a zoom meeting most of the morning, you know, you'd think they'd be pretty white, but that's actually where some of the best topics really come from is right at the tail end. You know, and, and, and I've heard it before. You know, hey, we have, you know, problems with communication. We have a lot of tech debt that we have to get through. You know, all these different things that suddenly bubble to the top because everybody now has a chance to, like, experience the game, learn, grow, create, and kind of develop their own skills there. And then what they learn, they now have a chance to present it. So it's really important to put, to, uh, put together that kind of that tail end debrief session after whatever game you're doing. Even if it's uh, kind of the asynchronous ones where you're playing through it individually, just having the debrief of like what you saw means this, here's why that's important. Uh, because the the gravity of it might not necessarily make sense right away. But yeah, putting together that lessons learned right at the end, it's that's where really good stuff comes from. I highly, I really recommend that. Well, Jesse, any comments? I know I, I completely agree with that. Uh, I I think a lot of people tend to turn this on and think that uh, automated awareness training is going to do the trick, and that's not the case in any way. Uh, like I just said, it's the debrief, it's the it's the conversation afterwards that matters. Um, in a lot of cases, probably more so than the content. That's really important. In fact, probably warrants me saying I probably missed having follow-up discussions <laughs> as part of your content uh, within this, this uh, being really important. And uh, just checking the chat. Uh, yeah, Terry was saying, you know, yeah, he Terry's agrees got a good point. with, uh, yeah, with what Jesse just said. And uh, it's funny that he's saying, you know, the, the duration of the content um, seems to be more palatable to people in the GRC or governance risk and compliance, right? <laughs> I don't know if that, what that says about them, but uh, it's interesting observation. Yeah, they like the dry stuff. Yeah. That's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why I gave them something to do in game. They have abilities that are kind of poking tongue in cheek at various parts of compliance, but compliance serves a, a function in a security program. So to ignore them in the conversation, uh, you know, is doing that a, a real disservice. Those two parts yeah. of it have to meet, but yeah, I, when your whole day is paperwork and that's how you love to spend your time. Yeah. I can't imagine there are a whole lot of fun at parties. Yeah. 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 Let's not bad mouth the, the compliance people though. So hey, I mean, I'm former it's, compliance. Uh... It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they serve a vital function and I appreciate all the yeah. paperwork, but I'm also aware of the fact that you have to kind of like living that lifestyle. And yeah. And it, it, it is important, you know, people do think of security awareness training as compliance training, any other kind of training that people hate to do is kind of in that bucket. Right. Um, but the whole point of doing compliance in my view is to kind of get a bit of a, a short uh, shortcut to managing risks. It's not getting all your risks managed, but it does get to you certain to threshold um, so that you have some assurance of, of some kind. And that's why you see in most of the compliance frameworks like NIST and others, where you have enhancement uh, or control enhancements, they call it, right? So where you've got a control like awareness training for um, all staff, then there could be an enhancement on that to say it, it's done every year or it covers certain topics, and so the more enhancements you put onto it, the more assurance you have that you're actually at that kind of level of, of risk management. So, you know, I think it, the compliance part shouldn't be discounted too much. It is part of risk management, but it's not everything for sure. And I think a lot of security professionals I talk to recognize, uh, even though you get to a point where there's a debate, you know, well, compliance is, you know, kind of game, people game the compliance system so that they pass without really having any assurance. And that's, the, that's where it becomes a problem. Yeah. If it meets the standard in any way, then usually you're good to go. Never, whether or not the training is useful or relevant, I mean, as long as it aligns with what the standard state uh, stipulates and goes to the people that have to have it. And you can validate that they went through the training in most compliance scenarios, that's all that's required. So yeah. whether or not they actually learn anything really is open to interpretation. And that I think is where a lot of the disconnect comes in. So yeah, the, the compliance piece helps drive those parts of the program really well, but whether or not those are super useful, that's kind of where you have to circle back and determine whether or not your program actually works for the business. Cool. Any other uh, questions or comments on that? On the, yeah, compliance, like approach, on the compliance front, the one thing that I might chime in about is there are tools now that uh, you know, if you're in a development shop where you can simply scan the code and it will come back and tell you 
uh, how far you've deviated from being compliant and even offer code snippets and recommendations. And, and I must admit, compliance, uh, depending on the angle you're approaching, if you're, if you're the development team, um, th there are some very uh, helpful tools to ensure that you're not, you're not writing code and putting yourself at risk. So uh, I know this isn't so much about the code development side of compliance, but you know, compliance in general is, is, is a fairly dry subject. And, uh, and the fact that there are, there, you know, I'm seeing more and more tools come to market that allow you to, to at least ensure that you have the safeguards that are, that are needed or necessary in place. Um, it's, it's nice to see anyway. Just yeah. Awesome. Thanks. And uh, Ryan just had a quick comment at the end saying, you know, sometimes you can't avoid a presentation style of delivery, um, but you can break it up. You can add quizzes, have exercises, and even simple games if you want to create a, you know, a bit of a, it's, it's not as scalable as, as having a platform, but you can really do some pretty easy things and, and inexpensively um, at any given time. So um, thanks everybody for, for chiming in on all those things. Um, I just want to remind people that I think I have set up a survey after uh, you leave, uh, after we end this call. Um, I'd appreciate it if you could just give feedback on what you thought was good or bad or what we should be doing more or less of uh, and, and just to rate the session, that would be awesome. And uh, before we go, I'm just going to also share a quick uh, thing for you so that you know, in case you were wondering, we have on the Click Armor website, um, the URL is, you can do, use the short form uh, clickarmor.ca slash CSAF, but it will go to live cybersecurity awareness forum. And so every time we have a session, I'll post the uh, video recording here. So the first two are here. You can watch them without any login, but you can um, basically sign up to be invited to the, the future sessions. So um, with that, uh, we'll do a quick round table and then we'll sign off. Um, AJ, any last thoughts? Uh, yeah, you know, keep security awareness fun, right? Like, I think that's a big piece that you have to do. You know, a lot of it's uh, topics that are mildly to not at all interesting. Everybody's usually counting the ceiling tiles by the time you get to slide number two. And it's not that, you know, PowerPoint's bad. It's just, I think it's been used improperly in a lot of ways. So yeah, you know, the biggest thing I would advise, keep it fun, keep it interesting, make it relatable, right? Make it something interesting that people are going to want to consume. Uh, and, you know, you'll do well, whatever it is that you've had planned, you'll do well. Uh, Jesse? Yeah, I, I was, AJ, that was well done. I 100% what AJ said. Plus, I, I love um, I, to remind people that awareness does not equal change. It does not equal behavioral change. So no matter what you do, make sure you understand that you have to actually do more than just present the information. Excellent. And Norman? Uh, the, the only thing that I find I found helpful is uh, when you know you've got a crew of people uh, taking the same test and there's marks going to be given based on performance. It's funny what a $20 Starbucks gift card will do <laughs> to motivate people to uh, actually take the course and, and do as well as they can. So sometimes a little motivation uh, outside of the, the actual uh, training is well worthwhile. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well said. Thanks very much, uh, Norman. And uh, just before we sign off, I'll do a, just a little plug for Click Armor since we're hosting this. And uh, I think we have, have the right to just uh, let people know Click Armor is the first fully gamified security awareness training and engagement platform. So we have a number of these um, courses that you've seen. We have tailoring that you can have that ability to um, have your CEO as part of the phishing exercise uh, within a, an immersive environment, which is highly interactive. And we have weekly challenges. I think AJ and some of the others have done our, our five-day challenge where you, you get three, three minute uh, challenges that just test you on little things and just help keep people uh, aware of uh, security, keeps the, the conversation going. And so those are the things that I feel really important about having uh, talked uh, or taught security awareness for 15 years. Um, happy to chat with anybody afterwards if you want to reach out and give a demo or do trials of, of the Click Armor platform. So really appreciate everybody joining in. It's been a great uh, discussion and we're going to have another one probably in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned. With that, I think uh, I, I kind of feel like we have to do this sort of uh, some lessons learned from Clubhouse. If you've ever been on a Clubhouse uh, call where uh, it's all audio, it's kind of like a 
conference like this, but nobody sees any, each other. So they have to come up with little things to kind of make it work better. And, and one of the things I find that they, they do is they'll have a little group sign off. So everybody has to say one, two, three, goodbye, you know, so, <laughs> so that we don't just sort of lag and, and just continue on. So uh, we're going to do that now. So thanks for everybody. Three, two, one. See you later. Bye guys. Bye-bye.